All right, for this example, I'm going to show you how to use ShortStack with N8N. The first thing you do is click the plus button and type in HTTP. ShortStack does not have a custom built module for N8N at this point, but the HTTP request module would work fine. Here, we need to set up the API request. You can find all of this information inside of the docs. This includes how to get your API keys and then hello world example that gives you exactly what you need to get started with the API. Most importantly, there's an API endpoint that you can copy paste. This is the staging endpoint. This is used with the staging API key. So once moving over to production, make sure to use the V1 endpoint with the V1 API key. Importantly, to change stage to V1 inside of this URL. So here we'll go to method, we'll do post. The URL is HTTPS api.showstack.io slash edit slash stage slash render. And on the authentication, choose generic credential type. So Shortstack uses a header called x-api-value, which holds your API key and authenticates you against our platform. So go to header auth. You can see that I've already got a sandbox header auth in here. For the benefit of this exercise, we'll just add this in here as well. Here it's X API key, and we'll add in the short stack API key, which you can get here on the, your dashboard under API keys. So this key here, again, for the production environment, use this key. So going back here, we've added that in. We'll just call this short stack staging credential so we don't lose track of it and we save it once it's saved we can choose it here that's it and then we want to send a body as well so this means the payload that we want to send through to shot stack as uh, the documentation you want to send json which includes the edit so here there's an example of an edit there we go we just copy this as the example and we add that into the payload. So here you can change everything, such as the text that you might want to show with a video URL by dragging in your input data from different nodes. But for now, we'll just render a simple video. After this is done, we can test it out. Let's do execute this step. And what it should show is a successful render with the ID here. Now, this just starts the rendering process. As it's asynchronous, you have to either use a callback, which is all explained in the documentation, just with a webhook, or you can pull for the status of the request. So for this example, we'll just use a status request. And what we'll do is we'll add another HTTP request in here. So we'll use the same URL here, but instead of a post method, we'll use the get method. And down the back here, we'll just have to append the ID of the request that was sent earlier. So that's that. And the authentication, we do generic credential type. You use the same header auth, and then we use the short stack staging credentials. We don't need anything else here. We execute this step. And as you can see that this status is set to done, we've got a URL to the video here. However, sometimes it takes a bit longer to run the video, especially if it's a longer video and it needs to load a lot of assets or has a lot of effects and transitions in them, or you use AI generated assets. So what we'll do is we'll add a simple loop to check whether the status is actually complete. So we'll do if, and in here we'll do if status is equal to done, and equals to, but if that's not the case, then we want to go back and do another status request. We'll add a force in here, a wait for, let's say, 10 seconds. And then we'll move that back to here. So let's just call this something else as well. This is short stack status request. This is short stack. Around the request. All right. So now what happens is once the workflow is executed, the short stack request is sent to render the video. 
and then we immediately get back a status request. This will likely immediately say it's still rendering or being queued, after which it will say false because the state is not equal to done. It will wait for 10 seconds and then do another status request. And once it's done, it will move over to the soil. So here, what we'll do is we'll execute the work plot. And as you can see, it will first turn false. It will wait for 10 seconds. We'll do another status request. And then we'll end at soil, given that it's quite a small video. Here we go. And that's the way to reshot stuff inside of N8N.